All right, hey there, folks. Welcome back to another train simulator video. Today we're back on Minerman's Bergen Line, not Norway, New York State, of course. Uh, we ended here in the last video. If you've not seen the last video and want to get up to date, go back and check that out if you'd like. Uh, but we're sitting here in Port Jervis right now in the beautiful and lovely Bluebird and Comet One coach and cab cars. Now, this train set uh, has already been released. It was released last year as the NJT U34CH in Comet Car um, Pack. But it it wasn't the best. I'm just going to be flat out honest. It was, it was partially done by DTM, a third-party train simulator dev. And uh, Minerman himself had a huge hand in this pack. Uh, he wasn't very pleased with the initial release, so he ground down, um, got into the nitty-gritty, and wanted this thing redone. That's what you're looking at here. Uh, physics, look, sound, everything has been redone. And this should be hitting the uh, Steam store within the next month or two uh, from, from what I've last seen um, Minerman mention on Railworks America. Uh, etc. So you should be able to get your hands on this very soon. If you want to see a video about this in its entirety, scroll down the page a little bit. I've got a video um, about the first iteration, which was just NJT, and then the Bluebird uh, Eerie Lackawanna variant, which you see right here. Anyway, so I'm going to stop blabbering. Let's get started. All right, so we are in the cab car. Let's crack the window open. Very nice. All right, we got it in gear. We got our light on. Let's go ahead and take the brake. Pop it and release. Now, it's going to be kind of quiet because uh, those of you that aren't familiar, this is not a powered car. Uh, the power is coming from the Bluebird or the U34CH at the back. So it's going to take a second to get us moving here. There we go. So it'll be a little bit quiet till we get up to speed. And something else I'd like to go ahead and mention, um, right over here, the old roundhouse facility, that is no longer there, um, but it lives on forever in time throughout history in uh, Minerman's lovely recreation here. Pop that seat down. This window opens as well. All right, so we are off. We are going to go from Port Jervis, like I said, where we ended in the last video, to Campbell Hall. That's going to be the end of this run. We've got about 29 miles through some of, without a doubt and hands down, most natural and scenic beauty that this route has to offer. Uh, we're going to skirt the mountains here for a moment and then bust into another valley um, in which will take us to uh, Campbell Hall. Over on the right, through there a, a bit of a ways we've still got the Delaware River um, and just up ahead we're going to be crossing over the I think it's uh, Neversink not sure how you pronounce that Neversink River I believe it is uh, we probably want to check our map make sure we're lined up here yeah we're good to go ready to roll Port Jervis train stations up here on the left. That's where we ended in the last video. Give the folks on the platform a couple of blasts. speeding. Yikes. Alright, goodbye Port Jervis. It's been real. Really real. Also, I'm gonna do my damnedest not to say fantastic more than three dozen times. I noticed and it was pointed out that I did. It was just 
it was on repeat like a record skipping. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm gonna try and broaden my vocabulary with descriptions. Alright, we're working our way onto the main line. Then our speed will pick up quite considerably. And we're basically gonna skirt the western edge of that mountain up there uh, for several miles and then there's going to be a rock cut where they basically cut right through the mountain uh, and that's going to cross us over into the next valley hop back in the cab Give her a couple of notches. So this thing that we're in, um, Minerman spent a lot of a lot of money. Out of, a lot of it. Well, I'll say quite a dime out of his own pocket, um, and that's not to be put lightly. To get. Um, the plans for these old comic coaches uh, in this cab car. Uh, apparently not many existed and were hard to get his hands on, but he, he finally did it. I go over a lot of that in the video about the revamp of this train set. Um, I'm not going to try to go too in-depth into that uh, this go-around, but it, it shows. There's the Never Sink. But it's an interesting cab car, nonetheless. Uh, initially, when this thing released, the uh, the gauges here were kind of misplaced, not in the right area, and he had that fixed. Worked tirelessly to fix it, as well as the physics. Uh, as far as, like, the, the drag coefficient, you know, the way the train set feels, the sounds, all kinds of stuff. Um, but again, if you'd like to see and hear more about this, go check out the other video I made about it. So that's an old, uh, it's an old dump yard for cars, junkyard, and that's that's legit there. Look on the map, look on GPS. It looks just like that. The little things. All right, so we have made a curve north. Let's go ahead and get up to speed here. There's our speed marker. Uh, over on the right here, there's a, a pretty large state forest called the Huckleberry State Forest. So it's uh, it's fairly remote back in here because it's protected land. So there's not going to be a, a a bunch of stuff, urban stuff, built in this area off to the right. And over the mountain as well, quite a ways, is Interstate 84 off to our right. Over to our left is now Port Jervis uh, and the valley that it sits in. So see, now you can tell we're kind of traversing the side of the mountain here. There goes Port Jervis way back there. But what's pretty neat about this area is the placement of the rock that he put down where, you know, it basically looks like they cut right through the mountainside to lay this track. And there's going to be a big chunk of it up here in a minute that uh, is literally like a gauntlet of rock. But it is absolutely scenic through here. Again, the way the rocks placed and the trees. Looking off into the valley on the left. Oh, that's a 40.
try not to stare out the window here. Ah, here's the cut right here. So we're essentially cutting through that mountain. Sun's rising 6 in the a.m., or a quarter past, actually. So we're headed east right now. We're about to cut north again for a minute, and then we're going to head due east uh, for the remainder of the trip. So this is what you have to look forward to on this route. Uh, as I mentioned in the first video, it's just got oodles and oodles of diversity. Um, you would never know that uh, the city of New York and New Jersey and Hoboken and the huge concrete jungle and metropolis is all just down the line here a couple of miles, a couple dozen miles. Freight services run um, all the way from the city out here to Port Jervis and then back, of course. And this, uh, we're going to pretend it's kind of like an express between here and uh, Campbell Hall. There are a few stations, I think at least one or two. I know we're going to pass um, Otisville and uh, I think Middletown. And Middletown's a pretty large city as well. There's going to be a branch line. Well, not a branch line, I'm sorry. There's going to be a line that's going to branch off to the right up here that's going to cut through the heart of uh, Middletown. That is, uh... Basically, well, I, I'm pretty sure it's called Middletown and New Jersey Railroad right now. Oh, I'm speeding again. Alright, Sean. Get a grip. But it is just beautiful through here. Especially this time of day. You know, or you could do like a sunset run. Where you kind of have the sun just dappling and dribbling through the trees and the leaves. This thing's got an interesting power handle, how it moves side to side. Alright, we have a 60 again right up here. Alright, so we've got to keep our eyes open for Minerman's uh, little Easter eggs. I believe I found one up here. There's a bridge up here with a dude on it. I didn't see the Jeep, but I think it may be him. Speedboard. Alright, we're up to 60 now. Got a nice tunnel to contend with up here as well that's going to cut underneath a mountain. And I believe that's going to shoot us out into Otisville. Alright, here's one bridge. This is Shin Hollow. Or as they say down here in the south where I'm from, holler. Like you're hollering at somebody.
And there's some substantial grades out here as well. The max grade on the root overall is 1.8%. Right now we're rolling at uh, 0.9. So I'm going to give it another notch. And it does have a bit of a up and down roller coaster -y sawtooth style grade. Um, out, out on the west end, anyway, of the root. And these, uh, these poles you're seeing over here, if I'm not mistaken, those are old telegraph poles. There's actually nothing on them. Alright, this bridge right here, there should be a one solo character. There he is, watching, ever watching. <laughs> That was the Geimer Turnpike. All right, now we got some speed. There's the Turnpike off to the right, twisting up the mountain. It's a huge lake back there. I forget the name of that, looking at the map. There's actually several lakes through here. It is just a visually pleasing area, this half of the map. And again, you can run just about anything out here. You don't have to run uh, passenger services. You can run freight as well. You know, going from Jervis to the, uh, to the interchange at uh, Campbell Hall or all the way to Croxton. Or, of course... Uh, Passenger, NJT, MTA. All right, so we're leveled out right now. Let's pick up a little bit of speed. Try to bump up our ETA here. But I'd highly recommend this train set when it does come out. Um, I would, I would definitely say go and grab it if you're into older uh, passenger workings. So there's a huge power line trail right here that goes up the side of the mountain, and then down as well. The nice view looking through there. But anyway, this thing just fits the uh, the old Bluebird and the Comet One coaches. It's like it was meant for this route. Wink, wink. <laughs> Another nice view of the valley below and the other mountains in the distance. Alright, we got Lake Helen coming up. Get ready to reduce our speed to 40. Double check our padding. Boop. Butterfingers. Yeah, we're good.
going way fast. This thing's got some interesting brakes, uh, the way they operate. I've not yet mastered them. It's got sort of a lapping system. The uh, locomotive does as well. Which also makes it interesting. It's more prototypical. Just takes a little time figuring it out. I believe this is the tunnel here. Yes, there it is. Alright, now Otisville is on the other side. Pretty substantial mountain right now. It's gonna be a couple of sightings up here you can play around with as well if you want to do some freight stuff. Below is uh, what we just crossed over is a defect detector that he has placed on the rails. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I got a brief look at it. I feel like I remember talking about it. So our new speed signs that just came in. All right, and here is Otisville. So this is going to be a passenger station. train pass here and we'll get out and take a look at it. Alright. We are now on the other side of the mountain range. This is Otisville. Gonna let the train go on. We'll catch back up to it. Try not to get it let let it get too far. This is a Pretty good sized parking lot out here for people to ride into the city. So this is the Otisville station. Again, placed very nicely. No gaps, no weird stuff. Uh, something else I'd like to point out is his his house and building models. Um, he didn't just plop down houses, okay? He sometimes would place up to like three houses and kind of stick them together. Frankenstein, if you will. Um... Let's see if we can find one here. No, nah, that one's normal. Here we go. This is one of them, I believe. So see, it's kind of like a, a custom porch on the front here. But he he actually mentioned this to me. I, I would have never noticed. Um, but that's kind of cool. So it's essentially two houses, sometimes three. And, of course, you got all kinds of stuff out here. I mean, even though it's it's way off the line, that's what's so great about this route. If you want to just free cam around, it's just the way everything looks, the way the roads are placed, the driveways, sidewalks, houses, bushes, trees, all that. All that good stuff. All right, we don't want to get too far from the train. So here's the sightings right here at Otisville. Those are probably some maintenance away hoppers. Could do some uh, MOW stuff out here if you'd like. 
Whoop. And I think this body of water on the right here is the Wallkill River. I believe. Whoop. Fancy camera work. Look out. Yeah, I believe it is. Let's see if we can find some more of these uh, houses. So you can see it's it's a lot more rolling, gentle hills out here than the the big boys out west that we just came from. Yeah, so see even this right here, he put this little this little house model into this barn here or grain silo, whatever it is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And smashed all these together. Got some goats out here. Munching on some grassage. Let's see, there should be a river crossing up here. But it looks legit, you know, looking at the map, the way the houses are placed and it's it's very shady and treed in. Um it looks good and, and it's nice. You know, being on the train and just looking through and seeing stuff like that. Here's a river down here. It's a bridge. Nice old building. Ah, uh, is this is this another amalgamation? I think it is. Is it? Nice looking little area though. Little country lane with an old stone built house. Got a crossing here. They got their trash out by the road, ready for pickup. Pickup day. There goes a bluebird. Alright, so we're still following the river. Here we go. Here's a river overpass. So even this. He's got, uh, you know, grass, bush, all kinds of stuff, tree-lined riverbanks, and rocks placed down in here. Even a little bit of deadfall. Go under the bridge. I mean, I'll say it again. For some of the stuff that you pay for on uh, the, the Steam store that's sold, published, um, this looks better than than I'd say like 75% of that stuff out there. Because a lot of time, uh, riverbanks and shoreline just don't look that great on, on vault routes. Forgot to turn the, the markers on the bluebird. Massive fail. It's another overpass right here. Can actually speed up quite a bit. Even these, the way the embankment is placed and the pillars of the bridge, it's all just very smooth. It doesn't look haphazardly placed. I wouldn't doubt for a minute if, you know, if he saw something like that, he went back time and time again just, just fixing it, touching it up. That's what's great about this route. It just, uh, it feels right. Some farmland out here. Up ahead, we'll start to traverse some uh, 
it's a pretty low-lying area. It's, it's kind of interesting for the region. Um, kind of swampy. Complete with the right kind of... Uh, flora. Stuff like that. Another bridge. Signal tower. Ah, I love this bit right here. This little highway here, so this can be accessed right here with this gate. It's just nice, um, just sitting here on the side of the road watching trains go by. Some more houses back here. Yeah, so this this is definitely a, a combo wombo house. You can tell because there's roof number one and then there's roof number two. But it just fits, man. Like, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about assets uh, with Train Simulator, but that looks like it would be completely normal to me. Because when he told me, that's that's why I had no, uh, no second thought about it. I just thought it was normal. Because it just looked like it should be that way. <laughs> that old cedar cabin over here. This one, this one has a vibe too. Yep, it is. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. And here's the bridge. Again, with the uh, the placing of the embankment, the wall, the railing there, the road, the elevation of things. It just looks really nice, really clean. But yeah, this road follows here. There's a pretty large house. This is uh, it's probably somebody fairly wealthy here. Got the big white fence. This is just a gorgeous area right here. Just getting out, free camming, panning around. You got the train line right there. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty doggone big house right there. There's their barn or farm. They got a probably a little trout pond going on back here. Another bridge. But just look at the surrounding scenery in this place. I am biting my tongue, not to say fantastic. Alright, where are we at here? So that there is obviously an old rail bed. I don't remember which one that is. Because the Middletown of New Jersey Railroad is up here. This must have just been another branch that cut down into the city going farther south. But that's definitely, let me pause it for a minute, that's definitely an old rail bed there. And the way the marsh, the lowland, the swampy areas look, it looks fantastic. You go through quite a bit of that um, between here and, uh, oh, let's say Glen Rock, I think. But that looks amazing. Big, nice, gradual curve. Some more companies and industry. It's like a little small one here, maybe like a roadworks type of crew or something. There's a train. That's a big house right there. Yeah, so that right there, that's cool. That he made this house with several assets. Like that is that is pretty amazing. That's a large house. Got a swimming pool. Shotgun house for the uh, the mother or father-in-law. Dude, that's a nice little looking uh, house right there. It's very alpine-y as well. That is nice. And they have an overlook of the main line. Ah, oh, he's even got the wall <laughs> stretched out to the road. That's, that's legit. That's pretty cool. 
That is pretty neat. Some more old houses. I love these old houses up here because, like, this is this is the birth of our nation, you know, up here. And these houses like this fit. They just look right for the area. Another pond. All right, where's the main? There it is. See, here's what I'm talking about. How uh, how kind of swampy and wetland it is out here, but it's gorgeous. Another one of those areas where you can just kind of set up shop over here and just enjoy nature. Watch a train fly by, blow the horn several hundred times. Just nice. Looks like some prime duck hunting territory. Probably not a great idea though, being right on the side of the railroad. Another bridge. Looks like this is Route 17 via the map. Got another nice rock cut through here. This looks awesome. Love areas like this. Another overpass. So even if you're into just like taking pictures or watching trains, whatever, like this stuff like this is perfect. Just chill up here and watch them go by. Run to the other side. Try not to get pancaked by a AI dump truck in the process. Whoop. Ah, so here we go. Okay. So this is part of the uh, Middletown, New Jersey Railroad right here. So this goes in um, to Middletown. Middletown's a pretty good sized city. If you take a look at GPS maps, you'll see uh, for yourself. But that branches off into the town, the heart of the town, if you will, the old town. Got another roadbed where it continued north straight through here, which is really cool. There's several old uh, road uh, railroad beds that he's put all through the map. And it goes on for quite a ways. So let's see. Let's go down Middletown and NJRR here. See how far that goes. Because I honestly have never looked. And look, even though you're probably not ever going to be coming out here, I mean, you sure as hell could if you wanted to. We got arms out here. And boxes. Yeah, so it just kind of flattens out. You're not supposed to be going that way. Anywho, here's, is this the main line? Yes, 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 yes. Now there's a ditch up here somewhere that I've, I've never seen built personally on any maps. And it looks pretty cool. You know, the way it's done. I don't think that's it. There's another one further up. But here's another bridge. I just think that's not loaded in right there yet. Because I'm way up ahead of the... The chooch. Yeah, there it goes. That's what happens when you fly ahead of the train. Some sort of other industry up here, some kind of tank or silo, maybe like a, a local water thing, <laughs> technical terminology there. Oh, 
What a sight. What a sight. Let's see if I can find that culvert I was talking about. Where are you, culvert? Kind of dam or something. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's one. Oh, uh, yeah, this is it right here. So you've, you've got it going under the road in this road junction right here. And then you've also got a tunnel for the highway over there as well. Just a ton of little detail. Like, if I tried to make just this area right here, it would probably take me a month. Long time. That's a huge lake. Alright, so we are coming up on Middleton, or the town of Walkill. You can definitely see it's a lot more urbanized now. Another bridge. Love this bit right here as well with the uh, billboards. Huge shopping centers out here. So in real life, this is um, this is all your big box retail stores, little restaurants like Burger Kings, KFC, stuff like that. Uh, this right here, I think, this is one of the industries that you can serve on the route. I think this is 84 Lumber, uh, which is a huge lumber company here in the States. Alright, here's Middleton Town of Wallkill Station. It's a cool looking station. Huge parking lot as well. But yeah, it's a pretty good sized town. A lot of newer, like, big box stores. So the old the old town, the heart of the town, is back off that way, I believe. And that's traditionally how, you know, towns work. That's a huge ass shopping mall right there. We are nearing civilization. Take us to your leader. Couple of reefers and boxcars sitting out here on this uh siding. So here's another. Uh, industry. Let's see, what is that? Ball metal beverage container and Revere smelting. So yeah, all stuff you can serve freight wise. And just let's just pause that for a minute just to appreciate how good this looks. He didn't just select, you know, an industry building and plop down a couple of tanks, whatever. Like it's the different kind of trees placed out here, the way the fencing is, these tanks holding propane or whatever the hell they may have in them, the parking lots, the trucks at the loading docks. Here's where they load the cars, here's the uh, bay doors. Stage and put uh, empty trucks or whatnot, or trailers, if you will. And this place looks good too. Looks like he might have uh, mishmashed that as well. And then these bits coming out of the wall here. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, so he just added some stuff together and made like that looks legit. That looks nice. And you got the other one over here. Kind of smelting company, I think. Got your switch. Got your feed pipes going under the ground there. And he's got these concrete barriers placed on the side. It just looks good. It, it like 
And the cool thing about areas like this is they're not too clean, you know. It looks like a, a, a working uh, area, you know, the way the stuff's just kind of placed around. What's up, buddy? Like, even all this just, like, smashed in there. That's just... That's a lot going on. That's a lot of detail. Yeah, and look at this. He obviously mashed all these together as well. So this ain't just some building you can grab out of the uh, asset library. <laughs> That's nuts. It's the employee parking lot way back, y'all. Truck trailer's all staged. Ah, here's a shed. They obviously probably dump out whatever they haul. Let's get back up to the main line. It's huge. Look at all these warehouses out here. See, it's totally different. Just a scant, like, what, 20 miles back to the west. You're getting into, you know, some more built-up territory. But it's it doesn't get crazy yet. It, it's still kind of green uh, and one of the best parts of the route is just up ahead but we're not going to be covering that today unfortunately it'll be on the next one even this place right here so it's got reefer cars it's just set up man look at this and that's what's cool about these quick drives even though it's not published finally right the way he's got the the quick drive set up is you can serve or work a certain area uh, and I implore you, if you have not, and you were like me, and you were kind of confused about what to do, I will link the route again uh, below the video and the information. I implore you to click that and look at the manual and the map, and it'll kind of help you out uh, and help you figure out what the hell you want to do and where you want to go. What kind of cars would be there, uh, what the industries may be, what kind of engine you want to use. Uh, stuff like that. It's just, there's a whole lot. I'm not even scratching the surface here. Not even close. Ah, what is this? Ooh, I have not noticed that before. That is definitely something. Alright, we got five miles to Campbell Hall. It's like a uh, little storage facility. Even the land out here, man. He uh, he did the terrain like just impeccably. It looks really nice. It's it's hard to stay in the train. I did for the beginning of this video, but by golly, it's it's hard to do. You just want to look around at stuff. At least I do, anyway. Oh, somebody left the gate open! See, that's kind of cool. Little details like that. Maintenance, whatever. Needs to be able to access the line. There you go. Watch it scream by here. I don't know. I just, I get a feeling around here. I've never been up here in real life, but in little areas like that, when you're on the side of the track, in a, uh, a consist or passenger train, whatever, screaming by, it just looks legit. Obviously, used to be two lines here. The, uh, the rail bed itself could certainly afford it. Of course, you've got this bridge. 
which are always extremely clean in the way they're placed with the terrain butting up against them. All right, let's hop back in. And what a view, too, in the Comet 1 cab car. Gigantic window. They don't make them like this anymore. You know, whether it's the design was for safety purposes, whatever the hell. You know, your, your windows and cab cars are not this scenic. the Walkill River. Signal, we are good to go. Another bridge. Let's take a look at this sucker. So this down here, um, some of you aren't familiar with with how some stuff works in the U.S. Old railroads, uh, counties and cities and whatever will, um, basically for outdoor activities, take an old railroad bed like that and uh, make it a walking or biking or hiking or rollerblading or whatever the hell trail. Uh, and they call them rail trails. Um, and this right here is an old railroad. Scoots off that way and then back off that way. Which little details like that are very, very cool. Oh my god, I didn't check uh, where we were at. Thank god these quick drives work, so I don't have to. And we gotta stop, like, now. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. So, we'll pause the train. Alright, this is Campbell Hall. This is currently a Norfolk Southern Interchange. Um... This was once run by many railroads. Uh, I think Penn Central, New York Central ran out here. Uh, Erie, Erie Lackawanna, Norfolk Central. Um, and then now I think Middletown and New Jersey Railroad uh, serve this area. So basically Norfolk Southern will currently drop cars off or stage cars and then pick them up while they'll, uh, when they're ready. Middletown and New Jersey will actually run up this branch line. So there's a there's a Y up here. You can see those two tracks branching off to the left. Uh, there's actually two short lines off this way. In the next video, that's what I'll be covering. And I am just basically ants in my pants, ready to get that one done. I'm geeked. I'm ready to do that video. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time out there uh, in the past on this route, just messing around, because it's so huge. Like, it... it to cover every, you know, square inch of track uh, on this route would take you a very long time. Um, so there, there is so much to do. So anyway, this is a staging yard. Uh, and basically, from what I've read and what I've been told, this, this town, Campbell Hall, right here, would not exist uh, without this interchange uh, and the railroad up there. Because there are several industries that still serve or uh, are served on this little branch line here. So this, of course, is Campbell Hall. This is the station. So here we go. We got our passenger station. 
Now this is part of the Y here. So that's coming in from uh, eastbound there. And then over here, westbound. And then it branches together and goes up around that away. And that is where we'll be going next. There's a ton of really cool stuff. And I'm, I'm a huge fan and foamer of uh, single line stuff like that where it's real narrow and close in and, and woody. You know, or, or almost like some street running, but it's not exactly street running per se, but it's still very, very cool. Um, I think we're actually going to go past our stop here. Are we going to make it? That was that. <laughs> that didn't go as planned. I'm a I'm a horrible operator. That's no surprise. So yeah, that's the end of that video. Port Jervis to Campbell Hall. Uh, next up, like I said, we'll be on the old Walkill Valley Railroad, which is uh, two little two little short lines that are very cool. We'll, we'll mainly be focusing on the the Walkill Valley, the one to the left, the Montgomery. Uh, goes up to a town called Walden. But uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you got a little bit of insight. Again, if you enjoyed the video and have not yet, please like and subscribe. And uh, that'll do it for this time. I'll catch you next time, though. Stay tuned, guys. Bye.